Hey, Mind University students, before we get to the podcast, we just want to tell you about a comic book. Now, on the show, we talk about lots of comic books from very different creators, and we want to tell you about our comic book. Yeah, that's right. Ashley and I have made a comic book. It's called Jupiter Jet, and it's going to hit stores December 6th. Now, you might be asking, hey, Jason and Ashley, why are you talking about this so early? Well, Ashley, why are we talking about this so early? Well, because retailers are ordering their copy of the comics right now. They tend to order about a month early so that they can get as many in for the people who want them as possible. So it's important, if you want a copy, that you tell your local comic book shop to check out Jupiter Jet. That's right. If you want to support the book, if you want to support me and Ashley, you should run to your local comic book store and buy order this right now. Uh, Ashley, what is this series about, in case they're asking? I'm so glad they have asked. It's about 16-year-old Jacqueline Jackie Johnson, and she rides the sky on an experimental jetpack and does what any other teenage girl would do, steal from the rich and give to the poor. But when she steals a mysterious object from the wrong person, can she survive the robots and the ray guns that they send after her? Yes, and you're going to get 32 pages in that comic book for $3.99. Not only is there uh, an amazing main story, but there's also a backup by Jorge Corona and us. Uh, Jorge Corona, if you don't know that name, he drew The Flash. Now, all you need to do is go in your local comic book shop and tell your retailer about Jupiter Jet number one. You can add it to your pull list if you uh, so desire. But we have three covers. We have a regular cover by Ben Matsuya, our regular series artist, a variant B cover by Ben Matsuya, and then a variant C cover by John Boy Myers, who you might have seen his art on Teen Titans. Uh, He does some Superman covers, and he also drew uh, the Royals. And also, if you have the previews, the October previews magazine, it's on page 254. Nice. Now, don't just take our word for it for how awesome Jupiter Jet is. We're a little biased. Uh, Actually, some other comic book creators have uh, chimed in on Jupiter Jet as well. Yeah, some people you may have heard of, like Tom King, the writer of Batman and Mr. Miracle. He says... Pure awesome comics from page one. I felt like I was with Jupiter Jet, soaring and smiling, eager for next adventures. It's high praise. Yes. And then Brendan Fletcher, who writes Motor Crush and Batgirl, says that Jupiter Jet cements its place in the firmament with high flying all ages fun. So Ashley and I are very proud of Jupiter Jet, and we're so excited for you to read the first issue, but we need your help. So if you want to make sure that there's a Jupiter Jet volume two, please run out to the retailers, to the local comic book shops. Uh, It'll also be available on Comixology. And put Jupiter Jet in your poll list. Ask your retailer for issue number one. Ashley will appreciate it. I'll appreciate it. And we guarantee you it's going to be a rip-roaring comic book. Now to the show. Hello and welcome to Geek History Lesson. I'm Jason Thunderous Inman. I'm Ashley Victoria Robinson. Welcome to your Mind University because you have stumbled onto the podcast where we take one character, construct, or ancient god from popular culture and teach you everything you need to know about it in about an hour. And this week we are tackling Thor. Odin's son, the god of thunder, and uh, Professor Jason, why might that be? Well, Thor Ragnarok is soon coming to our local movie screens and movie plexes, so I thought, like, let's talk about Thor. Now, for just clarification, we are talking about the Marvel Comics version of Thor. We're not just going to be talking about Norse mythology in general, because, oh my god, that would be like a ten-part lesson. It would get very detailed. We'd have to call in some professors from colleges, <laughs> uh, but you can request that if you so desire a <laughs> geek history lesson. You could. Can you imagine the 10 part Norse mythology geek history lesson? I don't even think you do it in 10. Just buy the Neil Gaiman book Norse mythology and read that. Now to Jotunheim. (laughs) Uh, This lesson, of course, uh, because Thor is a very popular character. We've got 185 lessons without doing Thor. This was requested by Rachel Krogan, Jamel Jones, Alex. Alexis in Bowen and Ollie Sutcliffe. And I mispronounced your name. It's because I'm a terrible reader. But uh, thank you. You guys are going to be my TAs for this lesson. And uh, you shall join the hallowed hells of Asgard. You have plentiful TAs. You can sick them after all your all your dark elves who are going to attack during this lesson. Uh, yes, they are going to have to kill all the uh, dark elves and trolls that face off with me as I try to read you this information as we jump into the first section of our podcast, the Ten Cent Origin. Which is, of course, the basic cliff notes of the character in case you go to a dope Asgard theme cocktail party and someone's like what's up with the muscly blonde surfer guy and then you can tell them now Thor of course is published by Marvel Comics his first appearance was in Journey into Mystery 83 in August of 1962 he was created by Stan Lee Larry Lieber and Jack Kirby now his full name is Thor 
Odin's son. His species, of course, is Asgardian. They are a species. His place of origin is Asgard. And his team affiliations have been the Avengers and many other Avengers squads. I'm just kind of grouping. <laughs> He's been on so many Avengers teams. Uh, Warriors 3, the Thor Corps, the God Squad. Stop it. Yep. Uh, his notable aliases have been uh, Sigmund, Siegfried, Dr. Donald Blake, Jake Olson, Sigurd Jolson. I don't know how to say it. It's, it's S-I-G-U-R-D. I've never heard it said aloud. So Sigurd. Sigurd, uh, yeah. Sigurd, Jarlson, Eric Masterson, and just Odinson. His abilities uh, without the hammer, uh, Mjolnir, of course, are superhuman strength, speed, endurance, and longevity. Because as guardians are just naturally superhuman. Mm-hmm. Now, with Mjolnir, it's basically a giant magic stick that can do anything. <laughs> And, oh my God. <laughs> and so some of those abilities are dimensional transportation, electric manipulation. He can only fly with Mjolnir and, of course, weather manipulation uh, and all kinds of other abilities. Again, it can do anything that the writer wants it to do. All right, let's move into Tencent Origin. Uh, or move out of the Tencent Origin oh, into the meat cute. I, I Okay, my notes... I actually wrote Tencent Origin twice because I'm a fool. I've done that a number of times. Um, I am a clumsy mortal. <laughs> so there you go. And the meet cute is a term that we stole from romantic comedy writing where we tell you where we first meted a character and how cute it was. You Jason, know, oh. I was going to say that uh, if I had Mjolnir, I could fix that mistake. That's one of its magical abilities. Is you can fix your podcast <laughs> yeah. without the help of Live, of editing software. Live, without editing software. <laughs> <laughs> That's dope. That would be totally worth trying to steal from Thor. Yep. Uh, where did you first meet uh, Thor Odinson? Okay, so the first time I ever met the Marvel Comics version of Thor, because I think I knew who the Norse mm. mythology version of Thor was before the comics version of Thor, but Marvel Thor, uh, I remember seeing shirtless Thor. He had blue pants and he had long hair. He wasn't wearing a shirt. Nice. And he was with this other bearded guy in a brown vest who also had a weird hammer. I would later find out that he was called Thunderstrike. And this was some sort of ad in an X-Men comic at the time. Mm. Now, I remember being like, who are these guys? What is this thing? Um, I have no interest in this comic book. And then Heroes Reborn happened, Mm -hmm. which is the giant event where Jim Lee and Rob Liefeld uh, took control of the Marvel heroes. And Thor appeared in that because there was an Avengers title and that is where I kind of figured out who Thor was for the first time first time and then I followed him into uh, the Kurt Music Avengers run which is my favorite Avengers run of all time and of course he is very much the verily doth Vene uh, Thor uh, in that run. Yeah. And that's where that's where I ran into Thor. Ashley, where did you first meet the Marvel Comics version of Thor? Uh, that's an interesting question because I didn't read a Thor comic until after I saw the Thor movie. Mm-hmm. Um. I knew about him for a while, maybe Civil War, but that's like not really Thor. No, that's, that's the clone that's Ragnarok. Like, yeah, I we're always, not really going to mention. By no, the way. No, 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 well, he's real dumb. Um, I always want to call him Robot Thor, but he's not. He's just a clone. Um, the first Thor book that I bought is a book called Thor for Asgard, which is a very bad book. Um, it has really beautiful art and it was recommended to me by somebody because I was like I like the Thor movie and I will always hold it against the comic shop that I will not name that they recommended me that book Um, but then there's another book that I read called um, Thor oh I can't remember what it's called but Thor is basically a little boy Mm -hmm. and it's all it's like really really pretty and you had it on your comicsology app and that was like the first standalone Thor series I ever read and I thought it was pretty good um but really, it was it was really the the movie that introduced well, me fine. to the finer points of who that character. And if is. that's your origin, that's fine. Yeah, don't tweet me. Yeah, however, <laughs> however, however you get into Thor, it's it's, it's all good. Uh, so let's dive right into the main meat of the lesson, which is history one hundred and one of Thor, where Professor Jason is going to lay down everything that we need to know about the Odin Sun, the God of Thunder. Now, Stanley. Uh, we're going to talk about publication history and Stan Lee, the god of the Marvel Universe with Jack Kirby. Uh, he's once said in a 2002 interview, um, this is how he described Thor's genesis. Okay. This is a quote from Stan Lee. How do you make someone stronger than the strongest person? It finally came to me. Don't make him human. Make him a god. I decided readers were pretty familiar with the Greek and Roman gods. It might be fun, true believers, to delve into the old Norse legends. Besides, 
I pictured Norse gods looking like Vikings of old with the flowing beards, horned helmets, and battle clubs. Journey into mystery needed a shot in the arm, so I picked Thor to headline the book. And after writing an outline depicting the story and the characters I had in mind, I asked my brother Larry to write the script because I simply didn't have the time. And it was only natural for me to assign the penciling to Jack Kirby. Excelsior! Can I tell you a fun fact about Vikings horned helmets? <laughs> sure. Vikings never wore horned helmets. That's a fallacy that was popularized by Wagner when he wrote his opera, The Flight of the Valkyries. Oh, and it made the costumes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. So I think that's a very interesting historical anachronism. I just wanted to bring it up. I've had them in my back pocket this whole time. All right. <laughs> All right. Tell me more about Thor. All right. We're going to go now into the character history. Now, cool. Thor is the blood son of Odin, all father of the Asgardians, and Jord, also known as Gaia or Gaia, excuse me, the goddess who was one of the elder gods. Now, Odin sought to father a son whose power would derive from both Asgard and Midgard. What is Midgard, Ashley? It is the uh, Norse name for Earth. It that is, is our, our, our realm. Hence, that's why Odin sought to mate with Jord. Now, Odin created a cave in Norway where Jord gave birth to Thor. And months after the infant Thor was weaned, Odin brought him to Asgard to be raised. And Odin's wife, the goddess Frigga, or or Freya, Mm -hmm. uh, acted as Thor's mother from that time onward. It was not until many decades later that Thor learned that Jord was his true birth mother. I didn't even know that that was true, so that's very interesting. It is. It's very interesting, right? But it makes a lot of sense as we'll learn more about Thor. Mm -hmm. Now, the Ragnarok cycle of the Norse gods has created numerous versions of Thor's origin story. And the fact that Asgard is sort of a place of myth does not actually help matters when you're trying to keep track of all the different stories and the descriptions of events. Um, And this... Ragnarok cycle is Marvel's explanation for why Thor's origin moves and changes. So basically these gods are born, they live, they die in Ragnarok only to be born again, live, die in Ragnarok, Mm. born again, live, die in Ragnarok. Now, in case anybody doesn't know, and in case anybody hasn't seen the movie with the same title, uh, Ashley, what is... Ragnarok. Ragnarok is, it's pretty easy to equate to like revelations in Mm -hmm. Christian mythology. It is the horrible war battle that ends all worlds and restarts your little uh, ring cycle. Yeah. Specifically for Norse mythology, it, it says that it's a great battle. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, you want to die in battle to go to the Elysian Fields. Go, 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 uh, no, no, Valhalla. Oh, Valhalla, yeah. Yeah, Elysian Films is, is Greek. Sorry, yeah. God. Uh, so basically, uh, in the Ragnarok Norse mythology, it specifically says the death of Odin, Thor, Tyr, Freya, Heimdall, Loki, Balder, basically all the Norse characters, mm. uh, and a bunch of uh, various natural disasters. And then also, uh, I did not know this, Ragnarok specifically mentions in Norse mythology that the world will be submerged in water. I did not know that. Uh, I kind of like that imagery, though. Like, yeah. you're, like it's been cleansed almost. Mm-hmm. But it's basically end of the world. Yeah. yeah. Or end of all reality kind mm-hmm. of a thing. So uh, let's go back to that. So now that you know that, you're going to kind of sort of understand something that will happen way later down at Thor's line. So there, Thor has been through who knows how many cycles, and the Thor we're experiencing is just the most recent cycle. Yeah, the most recent in this line of reincarnation. Yeah. So the young Thor was raised alongside Loki, who had been adopted by Odin after Loki's frost giant father, Laufey, Laufey? Laufey. Laufey uh, had been killed in battle. Uh, And for all their childhood, Loki was jealous of Thor, and Loki's jealousy, which grew to hatred, resulted in a desire to kill Thor. Now, Ashley, we have done a Loki episode, correct? Very, very, uh, I want to say it was the fourth episode, but I might be misremembering that. Uh, Very early, taught by me, uh, right when everyone's favorite, Thor the Dark World, was about to enter the world. Yeah. (laughs) So if you want to hear a completely different side to this lesson, uh, go check out that episode in our archives. Yeah, he turns into a horse. It's great. Yeah. Now, when Thor was eight, Odin sent him to... Now, I'm going to just apologize right now that I'm going to butcher a lot of names in this. That's fine. Okay? We don't uh, speak any Scandinavian languages. Spoiler alert. And Or mythical Scandinavian languages. Yeah, yeah. Okay. When Thor was eight, Odin sent him to Nadivalir, the land of the dwarves, to bid the dwarf lords Brock and Eitri to create three treasures for Asgard's ruler. Now, among the three treasures that Brock and Eitri created was the Uru Hammer. Mjolnir, 
Although, fun fact, Loki sabotaged the creation of the hammer so that its handle was made too short by distracting the dwarven weaponsmiths. Oh, that's funny. That's the reason why it's a short hammer. (laughs) Uh, Odin bestowed various enchantments upon the hammer, including one that made it impossible for anyone to lift it except someone who was truly worthy of wielding it. Odin then declared that he was reserving the use of Mjolnir for Thor, who would receive it on the day that the great deeds of his selfless valor had proved him truly worthy of its power. Now, this goes to a bunch of stories, and we've seen a lot of flashbacks to this, where you basically see a lot of stories where Thor is trying... It's it's, it's kind of a... Um, I would say a trope that a lot of Thor writers use where we flash back to a time where Thor was not worthy of the hammer and he's like, I can't lift it. Ah!" Yeah, usually after being a giant butt in a scene. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah, we we, we see him basically acting like a a bloodthirsty Viking and he's like, I can't lift it. Ah!" Mm -hmm. They like A lot of Thor writers like to do that or recent Thor writers. Yes. Uh, The movie does it too. (laughs) The movie does it as well. So basically for years, and we don't know whether this is thousands of years or anything, Thor strove because Thor's idea was if I become physically strong I can lift it that's what, the, what he thought typical man yeah t- <laughs> typical Viking man uh, but Thor through his struggles to lift the hammer became Asgard's greatest warrior before Thor was 20 he had fallen in love with the goddess Sif now we don't know whether this is 20 earth years or 20 god years who knows yeah it's like Narnia time like the scale is exactly. way off um, he, so he fell in love with the goddess Sif in fact when Sif had been kidnapped by storm giants and end up as a prisoner of Hela, Thor offered his own life in exchange for Sif's freedom. Now, the goddess of death, which is what Hela is, Mm -hmm. was so impressed by the young thunder god's nobility that she let both of them go, and the romance between Sif and Thor waxed and waned over the many millennia. Mm. Now, Ashley, I want to ask you a question. Okay. Um, Because I like Sif. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, she hasn't gotten a lot to do in the movies. Mm -hmm. Do you like... Thor and Sif together over various Thor's girlfriends because we're going to start talking you know we're going to get to a point where we're going to start talking about Jane Foster that's not really mm-hmm. a spoiler to anybody that's seen any of the movies but um, do you like Thor and Sif together? Yes. Um, do you think they are the preferred couple? Thor they couple? are my preferred couple yes. Why? Um, I like Sif a lot I really like comic book Sif um, movie Sif could get there but as you say she hasn't been given a ton to do and I don't know if yeah. she's in the new movie I haven't seen her in any, but at the time of this recording we have not seen the movie um, she's certainly not in the trailers at mm-hmm. any rate um, yeah I think I like Thor more with someone who could be his equal or his better than with a damsel and uh, Jane is very that until oh about what 2015 when the Lady Thor series starts spoilers uh, if you would like to request a Lady Thor episode, please do so at GHL Podcast. Um, yeah, I don't love Thor with mortals. And yeah. I don't love, it's, it's the same reason I don't like it with Doctor Who. I don't love godlike figures with mortal Humans. women. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. at mm-hmm. all. So, all right. yes, Thor and Sif forever and ever. Tweet me pictures. I agree. I, I'm with you. I think Thor and Sif should be together. Yeah. All right, now let's skip ahead to the 9th century AD. Well, why not? Uh, Thor <laughs> traveled to Earth to promote his worship amongst the Vikings. Mm. Now, both the North Norsemen and the Germans called him Donner, which is their word for thunder. Yes. And they came to worship Thor and other as guardians. Thor actively encouraged the adulation of his Viking worshippers for years and encouraged them to find glory in battle. Now, I think this is an interesting retcon that explains that the reason why humans know anything about Asgard is Thor was specifically. There, and he told them. Yeah. Also, this is, you could kind of look at this as a ploy of Thor trying to get praise to get the hammer because mm. he's a giant doofus. Yeah. Or an ass. Whichever way you want to look at it. Also, then they're going to name a reindeer after him because there's one called Donner. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's true. Uh, after the uh, during the 11th century AD, Thor faced off with Apocalypse, who at that time was powered by the Celestials. Uh, now, seeking revenge because Apocalypse had kind of kicked his butt, mm-hmm. Thor blessed his axe that he was using at the time with his own blood to imbue it with godly power, and it allowed him to cut through celestial armor because it had the godly Asgardian blood it's on it. It's maybe the smartest thing Thor has done to date you are in exa- this history You're exactly right. Now, Ashley, this is an axe that currently in the comic books Thor is using mm-hmm. do you know the name of his axe can you spell it for me it is spelled J A R N B J O R N uh Yarnbjorn you are so close God damn it. It, you're very close <laughs> you're, it, it is Yarnbjorn 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 
is how you say it. That is that is the name of his accent. Fun facts about Jason and I talk about it. We call it John Jabor. I, I, yeah, I actually like it called Jarn Jaborn. Jarn Bjorn. Jarn Bjorn. Yarn Bjorn. Yarn Bjorn is, what, is, is the name of his accent. So uh, there you go. Cool. Uh, when Thor discovered that his more zealous Viking worshippers down the line mm. had slaughtered the inhabitants of a Christian monastery. He was shocked and ashamed that they committed atrocities in his name and Thor completely withdrew from earthly activities altogether and that's when the active worship of the Norse gods effectively ended because Thor wasn't basically the, with them all the time. Well I gotta say there are some other gods who could take some notes from Thor's behavior because <laughs> that is some good godding right there. Uh, so for centuries uh, the only memory that man would have of the Asgardians of course is through myths and legends. Mm. It is also sometime during this hundreds, Centuries, hundreds of years yeah. that Thor finally became worthy enough to use Mjolnir. Mm. Uh, but also, he was also forced to live as a human for a brief time as the Germanic heroes Sigmund and his son Siegfried. Don't ask me any more about it. It is such a ridiculous story that I'm going to move right on. Sounds good, man. Uh, but then we move to modern times. And in publishing history, it was the 1960s. But for Marvel Comics history, is about 10 years ago. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> With that revolving timeline. Yep. So uh, during this, Odin decided that it was finally time for Thor to learn humility. So Odin had Thor surrender his hammer to him, and then he sent him to Earth in the mortal guise of a crippled young medical student named Donald Blake. Mm. He was then stripped of his memory of his true identity as Thor. As Blake, Thor learned the value of humble perseverance in dealing with his injured leg because uh, he had a cane, he had a limp. And as he came to care for the sick and dying first as a medical student and then later as a physician, um, and after leaving medical school, actually Blake opened a private practice in New York and quickly gained renown as a great surgeon. Nice. So, uh, there's one lesson to take away from this. And that is, Odin is a dick. This is going to come back <laughs> over and over and over again. And just remind yourself, Odin is a dick. Loki, t- Loki takes after his adopted father. That is correct. Um, Thor spends 10 years as Donald Blake and having no idea that he's Thor. Wow. Yeah. Uh, remember, Odin is a dick. Uh Odin then planted within Blake's mind the suggestion to take a vacation in Norway. <laughs> you know, the lovely vacation spot of Norway. Hey, you know, like your leg doesn't work because you probably had polio or something. Let's go skiing. Uh, go to a place that's famous for their outdoor vigorous physical activity. That's right. Uh, and I've never been to Norway. And to any of our uh, our Norway listeners, Norwegian um, listeners, Norwegian listeners, thank you. I, I, your country is lovely. I just don't imagine uh, a man with a limp and a cane would quite enjoy all your mountains. Oh yeah, please don't take that as a slight against so, Norway. <laughs> uh, I would love to go to Norway. All right. Uh, in Norway, Blake encountered a party of alien chrono. Kron- Cronins, excuse me, also known as the Stone Men from Saturn. Sure. And Blake fled from the Cronins into a cavern, the very same one that had served as Thor's birthplace a millennia ago. Oh, that's convenient. Uh, That is actually the place where Odin had left Thor's hammer in the enchanted form of a wooden cane. Now, (laughs) trapped in the cavern by a giant boulder, Blake struck the boulder with a cane in frustrated anger and was then transformed back into his true godly form as Thor. And Thor, he escaped the cavern and drove off the Cronoan, or the Cronin, excuse me. I don't know why I keep adding an I in there. Uh, And by the way, if you want to see an amazing recreation of this, a long time ago I did a video called The Origin of Thor, where we kind of did a drunk history version of this, and it's quite, quite funny. And and you can see this origin a little bit more expanded. Yes. Um, And it's uh, quite ridiculous that there are aliens in Thor's origin. I love it. It's great. All right. So at first, Thor, when he was Thor, mm-hmm. now, had, still had no memory of his past life as an Asgardian god. But as the months passed, more and more of his memories returned. Finally, a couple of years later, Odin revealed to him the false nature of the Blake identity and the reason for it. Thor maintained his Blake identity on Earth, and it continued his medical practice. And part of his affinity for Earth was his subconscious realization that his maternal heritage was basically from Earth. Sure. Now Why the, not? <laughs> yeah. It has also been said that the other part of this was his love for humanity and uh, his constant need to experience things that only mortals could know, like love, battle, death, 
and sex. Odin got a wife, so how come uh, immortals can't know love? Thor had a girlfriend. You mean as guardians can't know love? Yeah. I don't know. It, it, there's something. There's a lot. There's a many recurring themes in Thor's comic book mm-hmm, storylines mm-hmm. where he feels that like humans live life the best. Yeah, I, I didn't mean it as really I, more oh, no. of a question to the universe yeah. then. Uh, so then Thor came to divide his time between Earth and Asgard, and he still does that currently. Yes. Uh, for years, Thor was in love with a mortal named Jane Foster, who worked as a nurse for Blake. She was not a doctor in the comic book. She was a nurse. Yeah, because she was a woman, and yep. it was the 60s. Odin disapproved of this romance and refused several requests by Thor to make her a mortal. So going as far to allow Loki to set the Enchantress on Thor to drive a wedge between the couple. Again, what have we learned? Odin is a dick. You are correct, Ashley. All right. Then Thor decided to reveal his identity as Donald Blake to her, and Odin temporarily removed his godly powers. <laughs> Eventually, the romance between Thor and Foster came to an end on its own, and after that, Thor renewed his relationship with Sif, uh, although both relationships but with Jane and Sif have suffered in recent years. Yes, they certainly have. Mm-hmm. When Loki's manipulations forced several of Earth's mightiest heroes to band together to stop the Hulk, Thor became a founding member of the superhuman champions known as the Avengers. Heck yeah. He continues to serve with the team even to this day uh, and even working with other superheroes like Doctor Strange. Fun fact, there is even a storyline where um, Doctor Strange was operated on by Dr. Donald Blake. Oh, really? Yep. That's funny. They're doctor friends. <laughs> okay. uh, sometime later, we're skipping quite a ways later because we're trying. There's a lot of Thor um, information. And if we get stuck in the Asgardian trees, uh, we would never see the forest for days. In the trees and the roots of Yggdrasil. The there you go. Life tree. Uh, sometime later, a cybernetically enhanced alien known as Beta, Beta Ray Bill arrived on Earth and proved worthy of lifting Mjolnir. Uh, Odin. <laughs> what? <laughs> Beta Bill scares me. I love Beta Ray Bill. So He's such a good character. <laughs> uh, Odin created a new hammer for Bill and transformed the enchantment that enabled Thor to change into mortal form to Bill's hammer. This allowed Bill to assume his pre-enhanced form, but also remove the Blake persona from all existence. With the aid of Nick Fury, uh, the, of course the public director of S.H.I.E.L.D., Thor adopted a new secret identity, that of construction worker Sigurd Jarlson. Now, I, my, I'm pretty certain I'm mispronouncing that first name, and I'm sorry. Uh, I think Sigurd is correct. Thor actually did not become mortal in his Jarlson identity. He simply dressed as a contemporary human and wore glasses a la Clark Kent. Why does he... I mean, Thor's identity has been public since... You know, time in memoriam. I don't understand. Then I get because it's a superhero trope, but I don't understand why he needs all of these identities. I guess just because be Thor. I guess because he's just thinking that like I need to be on Earth and not have people look at me as Thor. But I agree he's with like, you. Oh, I'm Thor. I have no credit. How he am can, I going to rent an apartment? I don't. I don't know. Does he? <laughs> why does he need to rent an apartment? He has a castle in Asgard. I don't know. He's a full castle to himself. <laughs> uh, again, now we're going to start skipping ahead again because I want to get through a lot of Thor adventures. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Bill forms an alliance with Asgardian gods and is empowered by Odin to aid Thor. And his allies in a war with an approaching army of demons, which is revealed to be led by the fire demon uh, Surtur, mm-hmm. uh, who now wields Twilight, the gigantic sword of doom. It's cool. And after a series of extended battles, including a battle to the death with uh, Fafnir and the dark elf Malekith, mm-hmm. uh, the gods, the Asgardians, are finally triumphant. Although during combat, Odin and Surtur disappear through a rift and are presumed dead. Mm. Now, Ashley, before we get to the next part, I want to ask you a question. Okay. This happens several times in the stories of Thor. Odin is dead, supposedly. Next in line for the throne is Thor. Yes. His, well... el- his eldest son. No, it's Thor in the comic book. It's Thor. I know. Should Thor ever be king of Asgard? Um, I don't think Thor should be king of Asgard. I think making Thor king of Asgard... Um, would kind of be like if Bruce Wayne solved the murder of his parents, which he's actually done a number of times. Mm-hmm. Um, you're 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 cutting off the, a main goal, which is is he good enough to do that? Um, plus, uh, I can get behind the argument that it should be Loki. So 
That's an, that's that's cuckoo talk. <laughs> Loki is the king of Asgard. Come on now. Do you agree or, or disagree that Thor uh, should be king? You know, I don't know because uh, I don't think he should be king because that's not the character, but I also think Thor would make a great king, and Thor has been king like several times. I know he don't, has been. The problem is more story-based, is that once you make Thor king- You what, saddle him to Asgard. You're, yeah, he's kind of chained to Asgard, mm-hmm. and it, it's tough to read stories about kings and presidents. It mm-hmm. really is because most- the percentage of people in the world that are kings or presidents is very small. Mm-hmm. And so it's hard to emphasize, empathize excuse me, with a character that has that much power when most people in their lives never experience that much power. Yeah, yeah. Very well said. So, yeah, all right. So, again, Odin's gone. And the people of Asgard wish to make Thor, Odin's designated heir, their new ruler. Unwilling to give up his guardianship of Earth or his life of adventure, <laughs> Thor declined the offer and instead nominated Baldur the Brave to be Asgard's ruler. Mm. And Baldur ruled until Odin returned and reclaimed the throne a couple years later. There you go. For a time, do it. Thor was also merged with the human Eric Masterson, an architect who first met Thor as Jarlson. The two men would exchange bodies using Mjolnir, as Thor had done with Donald Blake. And after Loki attempted to kill Susan Austin, the woman who cared for Eric's son, Thor became furious and slew Loki. As a punishment, he was exiled from Earth, and Eric Masterson was given the Thunder God's power to continue in the role of Thor. Eventually, after Loki reappeared, because of course it was a trick, Eric was able to find Thor, who had been hidden within Eric's own subconsciousness, and rescued him from exile. Oh, well, that's lucky. Now, Eric proved himself to be a hero, and Odin rewarded him, because Odin sometimes just likes to give hammers out for no reason. Yeah. And he gave him the enchanted mace known as... Thunderstrike. Oh, we talked about that mm-hmm. earlier. Now, taking Thunderstrike as his alias, Eric continued to serve as a hero on Earth with his brown battle vest and <laughs> beard and long hair. He's so 90s until he died heroically after battling the Egyptian god, uh, the death god of Seth. Mm. Now, Thor greed for Eric, who had actually become a close friend for him on, on Midgard. And again, like I said, this was the character that I was talking about in my meet cute. Yes. Then Heroes Reborn hits Thor. Ashley, what's that? Uh, It's when Marvel decided that they needed a reboot, so they got a whole bunch of the image people to draw and write their titles and give them new life. Yes, but it was only the Avengers and the Fantastic Four. And and Jason loves it. It wasn't any of the rest of the characters. Uh, After that event, it only lasted a year, Thor comes back to the main Marvel Universe, and he gets a new title written by Dan Juergens. Nice. Superman writer. And in that title, um, there was a paramedic named Jake Olson. Mm. And he was slain during a battle between the Avengers and the Destroyer. And Marnot, who is a mystical character, gave Thor Olsen's form as a new identity and sort of a punishment for letting this human die. Mm. Although Thor could assume Olsen's form, he had none of Olsen's memory and thus found this identity to be troublesome to him. He also re-encountered Jane Foster while in this identity and brief sparks were rekindled between them. But eventually it was revealed that Marnot, the character that forced Thor to relive mm-hmm. this penance, was actually a character from Norse mythology. Ashley... Do you have any guesses? You know about Morse mythology. You have any guesses about who Marnot is? Loki. Incorrect. Um, I know very little about Norse mythology. Oh, all right. Um, uh, I don't know. Freya. <laughs> uh, incorrect. Marnot is one of Odin's ravens. Oh, Odin has three ravens. Uh, <laughs> yep, that's the thing. Yep. Yep. Nailed it. <laughs> Definitely Loki. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, I didn't know that. That's really interesting. Yeah, so, I like that story a lot, actually. It's, the first 12 issues of Dan Jurgen's run are really good, I think. Cool. Um, soon Thor got injured and needed to recover, and he still had responsibilities at Jake Olsen that needed attention. And Odin separated Olsen. Like what? I don't know. <laughs> Paying the rent. Taxes. Vine, I must pay my taxes. <laughs> Ridiculous. Thor needs an accountant. I don't know. What's um? There's no, there's no like a. There's a bunch of lawyers that are prevalent in the Marvel universe. There's no accountants that work for the Avengers. As far as I know, no. Oh, okay. Murdoch and. There's no certified public Avengers. <laughs> Do you know that? CPA. Well, CP Avengers. CP Avengers. <laughs> CP Avengers. Marvel could hire us to write that at any time. Uh, please, God, no. <laughs> I would hate to write that title. Um, okay, so he had responsibilities that Jake Olsen that needed attention to. Sure. So o- Odin separated Olsen from Thor temporarily so that Thor could recuperate properly while Jake attended to his life. 
Now, the temporary separation lasted far longer than intended when the fire demon Surtur, remember him? Yep. Resurfaced. And after Odin fell in battle against Surtur again, oh, geez. Asgard was left without a ruler again. Oh, geez. Thor reluctantly accepted the throne for the first time, assumed his father's Odin power, becoming more powerful than he had ever been in his entire life. Life. Well, being the All Father is kind of a big deal. Mm-hmm. He also remains separate from the Jake Olson aspect of himself, and without the influence of Jake Olson, which is basically the embodiment of his connection to humanity, Thor became more distant mm. and less empathetic to the needs of man. And Thor began determined, became determined, excuse me, to restore the gods of Asgard to their former place on Earth as beings to be worshipped, merging Earth with Asgard to accomplish its end. Well, old asshole though are coming out of the woodwork. That's right. Thor increased his activity on Earth and it resulted in a resurgence of followers for the Asgardians. A new church of Thor soon emerged and Thor's willingness to fight for the lives of his followers ultimately set him against his fellow Avengers when he attempted to overthrow the government of Slokovia, not, you know, Sarkovia, you know, the accord. Another fake Slokovia. Marvel. They like to use Kovias in Marvel. Yeah. So a lot of Kovias. Vaguely Eastern European yep. sounding countries. Latvia, Latveria, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Earth citizens became increasingly wary of Thor, and the Consortium of Nations and the UN finally launched an assault upon Asgard and reduced it to rubble. In the disaster that followed, an enraged Thor lost an arm in battle uh, and killed his other self, Jake Olsen, finding himself no longer worthy of Mjolnir at that point. Gee, I wonder why. Yeah, I mean, he's murdering humans left and right. Come on. I, I remember when he got his arm ripped off. Uh, well, he's got his arm ripped off a couple of times. Oh, it's maybe not, I'm misremembering. You're that. misremembering, I, I bet. Um, I think you're thinking of the later time that I'm going to talk about. Oh, great. Um, from this point on, Thor devoted himself to Earth's conquest in order to bring order to humanity. And the story moves ahead 200 years in which Earth has been ruled by Asgard for nearly 200 years. In that time, Thor married the Enchantress. Ew. And she bore him a son called Magni. Now, Thor finally came to realize that he had done wrong and used the device created by Zarko to travel back in time and prevent Asgard's destruction. He re-emerged as his younger self with Jake Olsen to ensure that Olsen's humanity would prevent that future from becoming a reality. Wow. So Thor doesn't lose his arm. He doesn't conquer humanity. He doesn't do all this stuff. He doesn't have a son. Yeah. Now, Thor returns Asgard back to its own realm. But Thor was faced with yet another Ragnarok threat when Loki teamed with Surtur using weapons created from the same forge which is which, which Mjolnir was made. This basically is... Loki kind of has this weird army made up of trolls and stuff. Mm-hmm. And he arms them all with sort of... Mjolnir like weapons so mm-hmm. some of them are axes some of them are maces but they're all built with like ur metal yeah and they're super powerful and they crack like Mjolnir in half oh cool um, now during this event Thor determines that the god above all gods so yeah the gods have gods mm-hmm. they're called those who sit above in shadow he finds out that they have manipulated Asgard into a repeating cycle of Ragnarok. This yeah, we is, talked about that. This is when Thor first figures out that this is not the first lifetime that he's ever lived. Mm. Uh, so he sought out these gods above gods and gave his life and that and also the power and realty of all of the Asgardian dimensions mm. to destroy the god above gods. Now, the Odin power manifested itself in front of Thor and congratulated Thor on his final victory and said that this was the plan that his father had always had for him, leaving Thor and the rest of the Asgardian gods to slumber forever. And only their memories of them would be remembered on Midgard. I think... I think that's interesting because Odin does have something called the all sleep, where when Odin sleeps, he sleeps for a long time. The Odin time. sleep. The Odin sleep, yeah, yep. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, this is like the Odin sleep for all of them. Yes, and and I, I actually really like this storyline. This is the end of that series, is, mm-hmm. is where the Ragnarok, it happens around Avengers Disassembled. Um, but I like Makes this. Makes sense. <laughs> I like this idea that Thor lets Ragnarok happen, but he stops the cycle. So there is no rebirth. Yeah. Uh, which I really like. So uh, Thor is dead. 
great lesson. And that's the end of the lesson. You did a great job. Thank you so much. I think that was a really good time. And, um, you know, I thought that was, um, you know, pretty short. And, um, you know, uh, but Thor's not that. Sorry. Of course not. Uh, Actually, no. Uh, Thor was gone from the Marvel Universe for about three years, though. Mm. Uh, So Mjolnir returned first. Mjolnir returned to Earth, landed in a deserted field, and inadvertently freed Doctor Doom from his extra-dimensional prison along the way. <laughs> Why not? Um, I actually like this storyline a lot. Uh, it was um, Mjolnir threw, uh, flew through all the dimensions, and when Doctor Doom saw, he grabbed on, and that pulled him out. Oh, that's cool. Um, now, Donald Blake somehow was brought... Uh, return from oblivion after Odin's death. Like oh, there was right. some sort of spell that undid his uh, unexistence. Meanwhile, a clone of Thor, uh, codenamed Project Lightning, also codenamed later Ragnarok, mm-hmm. was released during a battle between pro and anti registration heroes during the Civil War. Yes. And to shock both sides, he killed Bill Foster during the fighting uh, of. This giant yeah. civil war battle, which uh, actually, real quick, what is civil war? A uh, civil war is when the United States government said that, hey, you guys can't have uh, autonomy. You should register with us. And Iron Man said yes. And Captain America said no. And then they fought. That's right. Uh, now, during this time, a little bit later after that, this reborn Donald Blake traveled into the void and talked to Thor. Uh, he convinced Thor that he had ended the Ragnarok cycle for good and that if he returned to Earth, he could rebuild Asgardian, Asgard and restore his Asgardian friends and allies and they would be free from the cycle. They could live and just do whatever happens is whatever happens. Um, and so Thor did. And this begins J. Michael Straczynski's run on Thor, mm. which a lot of the first movie he takes from. Yes, it does. Thor used Mjolnir to re- recreate Asgard's capital in Broxton, Oklahoma. But Tony Stark was the head of S.H.I.E.L.D. at this time, and he didn't really like that. Singing a compromise, Stark rationalized that Asgard could be considered a foreign embassy with diplomatic immunity. Diplomatic immunity for all the Lethal Weapon mm-hmm. fans out there. Uh, and gave it basically diplomatic immunity to all of Asgard. Thor was like, I, Dine, I will accept ye. Um, then Thor began to gather all the lost Asgardians were hidden on Earth. In Africa, he restored the Warrior Three to their true forms. Uh, and initially, Thor successfully restored all of the Asgardians, although he couldn't find his father and he couldn't find Sif. Uh, but during the Odin sleep, because Thor had that power still, mm-hmm. Thor had a vision in which he discovered that on a subconscious level, he wished to be free of his father. And he saw Odin fought an eternal cycle of battle with Surtur, dying and being reborn each day, a la Sisyphus, uh, Sisyphus from Greek mythology. Yes. Um, this is also the run where Loki was a lady because yes. she was, uh, he was, she, he was inhabiting the body of Sif. Mm-hmm. Loki traveled to the past and ensured that Bor, the father of Odin and first king of Asgard, would perish in battle against the Frost Giants. However, in present day, Loki revived Bor in New York City and placed the spell on him to make him mistake everything around him for an enemy so that he would attack everything in sight, including Thor. Sensing a portion of Odin's power inside what he saw as a demon, but it was actually Thor, Bor attacked Thor, attempting to avenge his dead son. So many oars. Yep. And through this battle, Thor was forced to kill Bor. Oh, man. Loki reminded Baldur that the resurrected Bor was technically king of Asgard and actually superseded Mm -hmm. Thor. And so the punishment for killing a king was banishment from Asgard. And Baldur was forced to agree and kicked Thor out of Asgard and made and was made monarch in his place. Aww. Then siege happened. Ashley, do you know what siege is? I don't know what siege. Uh, no. Siege is basically where this giant battle happens around Asgard in Oklahoma. And um, basically Norman Osborn, who I is. I knew it was a Norman Osborn thing. Yeah. Norman Osborn, who is the head of Hammer, which is basically the shield replacement, tries to take over Asgard. It's kind of dumb. Cool. Uh, during the siege of Asgard, Thor rushed to the aid of Asgard against Norman Osborn and his invading Dark Avengers, uh, although Dark Avengers is a great run. Osborn ordered the Sentry, who is basically the Superman of the Marvel Universe, to destroy mm-hmm. Asgard before the horrified eyes of Thor. During this event, Loki was killed. Thor rejoined the Avengers and ended his exile into Asgard. Now, 
Asgard was rebuilt. Yep. And Thor became more melancholy and saddened and sorrowful because Thor actually ended up missing his brother, who he actually said made him laugh like no other when they were children. Mm -hmm. And he found out that Loki's soul was not actually in hell because Loki had done a bunch of enhancements or spells, enchantments, excuse me, to prevent his soul from going to hell. Smart guy. Uh, He is. He's also an evil demon. Uh, Uh, Or he's great. So Thor found out that Loki was somewhere on Earth. So he went looking for him and found him in Paris, reborn as a sort of 10-year-old child with no memories of his past and no identity. Yeah. Thor revealed that he was his brother and a god, and that despite Loki's former villainy, Thor couldn't imagine life without him and wanted to bring him home. And so he did, and now Loki's a child. Mm -hmm. Now, Ashley, you are a big fan of Loki. I am. We just went through a story where Loki was a woman. Yep. And Loki uh, as a child. Yep. Do you like that Loki transforms a lot? I do, because Loki is a trickster, and a huge part of the traditional definition for trickster is changing your appearance and shape-shifting. So to me, that is very true to the classic North mythology definition of that power set. Uh, Lady Loki looks amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, I really like Kid Loki. I don't like teenager Loki, like a post-Young Avengers Loki, um, slash what the character's doing right now. He ran for president. But I yeah, think that was the, so dumb. I think the idea of Thor having to deal with his favorite version of his brother is a really interesting idea. And I think that Journey into Mystery run is tragically underrated. Oh, that Journey into Mystery run is great. Yeah. It's yeah, yeah, so yeah. good. So. Kieran uh, Gillen, I think. Yes, right? it is. Yeah. Yes. Okay, now eventually the World Eaters invaded the Nine Realms, and Thor was forced to bring Odin back to life, much to the later exasperation of Loki, because when Odin showed up, he saw child Loki, called him a killer, and an abomination responsible for Asgard's fall, causing the 10-year-old Loki to run away crying. Thor became angry with his father and calls him a horrible, unloving man for screaming at the child. And remember, what is the lesson we have learned? Odin's a dick. Odin's Thor's a dick. not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And you know what? There's something else that you need to know, and that is you can always help us over at patreon.com slash Jawin, because because we can ensure that it'll be the only way that we don't become a dick. And, you know, it just helps support the podcast. It helps keep this podcast going. You know, any little bit of support over there really helps out the podcast. One dollar a month really makes a big difference because um, I think it took me about four to five hours to research all of this Thor stuff and put it all in the compile and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, we want to keep Geek History Lesson free to you guys as much as possible. And Patreon.com slash Jawin is the way we keep that every month free for you. Um, But you get lots of cool stuff over there. We do a movie live stream every month. You get every single week there's a Geek History Lesson episode. There's a Geek History Lesson extra. And we also have the extra podcast, Jason and Ashley's Excellent Adventures, where we talk about our life and all kinds of stuff like that. So if you have a little bit of extra cash lying around and you want to, you like all our content and you like all our stuff, you like our personalities, you want to keep us going, you want to keep it going to episode 300 because we're close to 200. Yeah. Then go to patreon.com slash John. And thank you so much to all our patrons over there that keep this show alive because... Honestly, we wouldn't have been doing Geek History Lesson as long as we have without that patron. Now, that's the honest truth. Mm-hmm, absolutely. So, thank you so much. And now, back to Thor. Next, Ashley, we're going to talk about Fear Itself. Heck yeah. Where a bunch of Asgardian hammers fell to Earth because Marvel basically wanted to copy Green Lantern's Blackest Night storyline exactly. It's so, such a good idea. We're still going to skip right past it. <laughs> and we're going to talk about Jason Aaron's run in The God Butcher. Now, Jason Aaron is currently writing Thor. Mm-hmm. Um, now, after discovering the corpses of long-lost gods, Thor set out to find their killer, Gore the God Butcher. And during his quest to stop Gore from killing every other god, Thor found himself in a distant future where he encountered a thousands and thousands year old Thor with uh, only one arm. Yeah, and that's what I'm remembering. The, and, and he's also the king. Mm-hmm. Uh, with the help of his future self and a past self that is uh, angry Viking Thor uh, that, that Gore had enslaved, Thor managed to stop Gore from activating a bomb that would have killed every god across, uh, across all of time and space. Also, after discovering that his old love Jane Foster had cancer, Thor confronted a returning Malekith who had set out to kill every dark elf who wouldn't follow him. 
Thor found himself pitted against the Roxxon uh, Corporation, yeah. uh, which left actually the city of Broxton, Oklahoma, in ruins. And when the rest of the Asgardians decided to leave Earth, finally Asgard left Earth, or as, as it's called now, Asgardia. Mm-hmm. Uh, Thor remained on Earth, and he moved his castle from Asgardia to Broxton and allowed all of the citizens of Broxton to live in his castle. So now Broxton, Oklahoma, is a giant castle, which also I think I think that is such a great move for the character of Thor. I do too. Um, but in my brain, when I think about it, I always imagine Castle Grayskull, so it's very funny to me. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> and then uh, we have another Marvel event called Original Sin. Uh, basically, this one is after finding Utah's uh, corpse on the moon. Oh, Utah, of course, is the Watcher. Uh, Thor alerted the Avengers of the Watcher's murder and helped them investigate the crime. Now, he and several heroes were affected by uh, uh, Utah's I, when it exploded, it created a blast of energy, which revealed deep secrets related to those affected by it. Now, to Thor, it revealed the existence of a secret 10th realm. We've heard of nine realms mm-hmm. in the world tree. This is the 10 realms, which actually had been at war with Asgard eons ago, and he learned that he actually had a secret long-lost sister who still lived in the 10th realm. Ashley, do you know who Thor's sister is? I don't know who Thor's sister is. Thor's sister is Angela. Oh! Yeah, I do. The Angel. This is the Spawn character that Marvel took back from Todd McFarlane, and they decided to shove into the Marvel Universe for no good reason. So I I read this run. uh, The Tenth Realm? Recently. Oh, it's bad. Um... I read a number of Marvel stories with Angela in them. Um, I don't like that idea, so I completely forgot that Thor had a, quote, sister, unquote. Now, if you don't know who Angela is, Angela, of course, is uh, she's a character created in the Spawn comic book, the Image comic book, Mm. by, by Neil Gaiman and Todd McFarlane, and she was an angel that was meant to hunt Spawn. Now, eventually, Neil Gaiman sued Todd McFarlane, and he got the rights to Angela, because he was Mm -hmm. like, I created Angela. And then, for some reason, Neil Gaiman gave Marvel the rights to use Angela, and they sort of just shoved her into that universe. I believe it was because Marvel wanted him to write something else, and he only agreed to if they bought Angela from him. Oh, yeah, they bought Angela, or something like that. Okay, it's probably, I don't know exact details, but anyways, I don't want to turn this into an Angela lesson, because to be honest with you, she became part of the Guardians of the Galaxy. And she Force, yeah. she doesn't work in the Marvel universe. No. She only works in Spawn. Yeah, actually, she was a great character in Spawn. So there you go. There you go. Jason likes Spawn. Uh, Thor returned to Earth to help the Avengers investigate Uta. U- U- Uatu, I, I don't know how to say that name. Uatu's murder. This has been the whole lesson of bad names. It's not an English name. Yep. Don't worry about it. Uh, later, while fighting Nick Fury and his army of life model decoys, Fury stopped Thor completely by whispering in his ear. Now, for two years, we didn't learn what he said, and I'm not going to tell you what he said for a while. And whatever Nick Fury said caused Thor to lose his confidence about his godhood and consequently his ability to wield Mjolnir. Mm -hmm. After losing the ability to wield Mjolnir, Thor took up his battle battle axe, Yarn Bjorn, as a substitute. And then on the moon, because that's where the hammer fell, Thor tried to claim his hammer but was once more rejected by it. Even Odin, the creator of the worthiness enchantment of Mjolnir, who has always been able to pick up the hammer, couldn't pick it up. And during a battle against Malekith and some frost giants, Thor lost his left arm. Yeah. It was cut off by Malekith with yarn be yarn. It's it was, awesome. It was later replaced with a black ur arm prosthesis. So it's as strong as Mjolnir. Mm-hmm. Now, in the future... Thor, uh, remember, he met old King Thor who lost his left arm as well. Yeah, it's Fun cool. fact, uh, old King Thor's left arm was the arm of the Destroyer. I didn't know that. So I wonder if sometime we're going to get the storyline or Jason Aaron's going to give us a storyline where Thor's left arm gets replaced by the left arm of the Destroyer. I bet so. Jason Aaron doesn't let dangling mm-hmm. participles like that stand mm-hmm. for very long. Uh, later, an unknown woman who was secretly Jane Foster proved worthy of wielding Mjolnir and became the new Thor. Mm-hmm. Enraged, Odinson didn't know who she was, but he attacked her and tried to take Mjolnir back as it attacked the frost giants that surrounded them and went to its new owner's hands 
of Jane Foster, not mm-hmm. his. Sad, he accepted that he was never going to recover his hammer and asked if she was his mother, which she answered by French kissing him. Yeah. Yeah. Because everyone thought she was Freya for quite a while. Yep. Odinson then had adventures and secret wars and kept looking for a hammer to make himself worthy. He then journeyed to the realm of Asgard after learning that from the unseen that n- this was, of course, Nick Fury's new secret identity about the sudden appearance of a Mjolnir from an alternate reality. When he reached his native realm of Asgardia, Odinson captured the city, uh, discovered, excuse me, that the city of Asgard had vanished, having been captured by the Collector. You might remember him from the Guardian of the yes. Galaxy movie. Uh, now, this collector had also been interested in the second Mjolnir, and we learned that this Mjolnir was from the Ultimate Universe. Ashley, real quick, very briefly, what is the Ultimate Universe? The Ultimate Universe is a thought experiment of what if all of these characters were created in 2000 instead of in the 1960s. It was wildly popular until it wasn't, and then Marvel imploded it and brought the characters that they liked from it and the aspects that they liked from it over into the 616. Yeah, and it imploded in Secret Wars, and I like the idea, because Ultimate Thor's hammer is half hammer, half axe. Yeah. I love Ultimate Thor's hammer. So I like the idea that this hammer gets thrown into the Marvel, uni- the na- regular Marvel universe. Yeah. Um, over his attempts to capture the hammer, Odinson still found himself unworthy, and Odinson managed to make his way towards the hammer, and he prepared to lift it. But he decided to leave it alone, believing it was never his hammer to wield. So mm. he never actually picks it up. We don't find out whether he was worthy. He would have been worthy enough. Uh, now, Odinson then used the uh, hammer's uh, teleportation function to transport himself, his allies, and his collector's captive creatures uh, in the city of Asgardia away from the collector's ship and back to Asgard's realm. Now, Odinson later told Bill that the reason he didn't lift the hammer was that he felt unworthy to wield it as he thought all gods like himself were selfish, selfish creatures. And then this is when we learn what Nick Fury whispered to him to lose his hammer. Nick Fury whispered, Gore was right. Mm -hmm. And revealed that Gore the God Butcher was right about gods being selfish and not caring about mortals. And we revealed that Thor agreed with him. Odinson agreed. Mm -hmm. That Gore convinced him. And as soon as he thought that, he lost the ability to control his hammer, which I think is a great great reason um, but Bill assured Odinson that he proved himself worthy to be exception and that he would get a hammer someday then Secret Empire happened uh, and Thor joined up with the evil Steve Rogers for a while because the evil Steve Rogers was able to lift Mjolnir which is a ridiculous thing but that is a tale for another Thor lesson and very briefly I want to give you one aspect of hope for the future uh, Thor 700 came out and in it there was a vision of the future mm-hmm uh, from people of the nine realms, and in this vision we see Loki holding the Infinity Gauntlet. Yeah, we see Jane Foster dying, mm-hmm. and her helmet cracked. She's been dying forever, though. Yep, and we see the Odinson Thor himself in a brand new Thor outfit, wearing a golden helmet with a golden robotic arm, holding a golden hammer. Mm-hmm. And so that is supposedly going to happen, I would say, sometime to pass in the future as a nice little tease in the future. And that is the tale of Thor Odinson. Wow. I can't believe you took that much history and condensed it. That was great. It took a lot. There's a little bit longer than a normal geek history lesson, but, um, you know. That's fine. I, I, I really had to cut some stuff out, but I felt like everything we talked about, like, you kind of needed. Mm-hmm. So, all right, let's move into recommended reading. Where Professor Jason is going to recommend a bunch of stuff that you could read if you want to know more about Thor Odinson. You can find these and a bunch of others over at geekhistorylesson.com slash recommended reading. You click on the widget of the thing that you like, you buy it, and a little bit of support comes back our way so that we can keep recommending awesome books for you to read. That's right. The first one I'm going to recommend is Thor by Walter Simonson, Volume 1. This, of course, kicks off the epic, uh, probably the best run of Thor of all time. It is a little dated, but there are multiple volumes of this, and this is what leads to the Ragnarok storyline with uh, Surtur and all these guys and Odin dying that a lot of Thor Ragnarok is going to take. Hela shows up in this run. Uh, a lot of Thor Ragnarok is going to take a lot of cues from this run. So if you're curious about that Thor by Walter Simonson volume one it's the first one I'm going to pick the second one is I'm going to pick uh, Thor God of Thunder volume one the God Butcher so good uh, it's by Jason Aaron and Esad Ribic. it's amazing this whole storyline is great even though I basically told you about it the idea of uh, seeing Thor at three different time periods in the far far past about 9 AD mm-hmm. in current day and in the future is so good and I didn't tell you every detail about that story so I think you can still get a lot of great enjoyment it is 
even when it was coming out, you could read it. You were like, this is one of the best Thor storylines of all time. Yep. And then finally, I'm going to talk about a little bit of something. Um, I'm going to talk about the ultimate. It's a storyline called Ultimate Comics Thor. Uh, it is set in the Ultimate Universe. Jonathan Hickman and Carlos uh, Pacheco. Uh, they go back to the beginning and they tell the origin of Thor, Loki, and the rest of Asgard. Nice. Um, and it's very interesting. It's a very different Thor story because it's their origin stories, but also the underlying tone of the book is is this real or is this fake? Which is a running theme for Thor in the Ultimate Universe. Everyone thinks he's just a crazy Norse guy yeah, for quite a while. Yeah, and Ultimate Comics Thor really sits on that, and I think it's a really neat storyline, and also Carlos... So if you're looking for a Thor storyline that's a little bit different, yeah. it's very self-contained, and that's the one that I pick. So there you go. Nice. All right, so I didn't put a discussion in this episode um, because I thought it would go long, but actually, really quickly, um, anything you learned about Thor that you didn't learn before? Um. Any thoughts? Any insight? Um. Odin's more of a dick than I thought he was. Odin is a dick. And I can't get over the fact that Thor has had multiple civilian identities. I just think that's so ridiculous. Sure. So there. All right. Go. Let's move into the teaching tweet. Where in 140 characters or less, Professor Jason is going to sum up everything he just taught us. And to see this and all of our teaching tweets every week, head on over to Twitter at ghl podcast. Verily. Thor, the god of thunder, has tales of epic proportions. But his hammer doth break too much, methinks. <laughs> there you go. That's your teaching really tweet. Good, yeah. All right, let's go into the final section of our podcast, the GHL Honor Roll, where if you go over to iTunes, you leave us a five-star review. We're going to read it on the podcast. This five-star review comes from Willie Burke, and he says, or she I can't express my love enough. I've been blessed with the gift of discovering this podcast. It's funny, has a great structure to each episode, and informs you about both characters you think you couldn't know any better and ones you've never heard of. On a personal note, I've always struggled with weight problems, and now I'm motivated to exercise. I take walks and runs because I have Jason and Ashley and their great lessons to accompany me the whole way. When I tweeted suggestions to them, uh, they responded and even retweeted my Spider-Man chronological timeline request. I really love this podcast. Podcast, uh, whether an inspiring nerd or well experienced one, I can say for sure you will enjoy it too. And Willie Burke, uh, if you're listening to this on a run right now, uh, keep going. Great job. And uh, it's nice. I'm glad that we get to keep you company. I do want to say that I'm, I'm honored that you include us in your personal journey that way. That's maybe one of the nicest things anyone's ever said. Keep on to going, us. man. Uh, uh, all I say is um, you see that stop sign ahead of you? You can get past it. Just we'll keep you. It's okay. Come on. Keep going, man. You get, keep going. You got it. You got it. See, you made it. Easy, right? <laughs> there you go. We are also taking the Spider-Man chronological suggestion very much to heart. We are, too, very much. And if you want to join uh, Willie, all you have to do is go over to iTunes and leave us a five-star review, and you will join the honor roll. It helps us pop up in the search on iTunes, and it makes a big difference in this podcast. Uh, we only mention all this stuff that we need you to do because it it does help the podcast more than you realize. And it helps grow our awesome Mind University community. That is right. Okay, so if you want to download and subscribe to future episodes of this podcast, you can do that on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and more. And you can suggest episodes like Thor. You can be like one of the cool people like Rachel Krogan, Jamel Jones, Alexis N. Bowen, and Ollie Sutcliffe, who suggested Thor. Thank you so much for doing that. Uh, Ashley, where can they suggest future episodes like Beta Ray Bill or Female Thor? Um, you can suggest episodes like Throg if you go over to geekhistorylesson.com, facebook.com slash geekhistorylesson, or again on Twitter at GHL Podcast. There's a bunch of ways to contact us in all of those places. And don't forget, you can go to patreon.com slash Jawin for our GHL Extra Podcast, where we'll be talking about our favorite Thor supporting characters and what we'd like to see in Thor 4. Yeah, I know Thor 3 is coming out right now, but we're going to hop ahead. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Jawin, J-A-W-I-I-N. Follow Ashley on Twitter at Ashley V. Robinson. And for Geek History Lesson, I am Jason Lightning Bolt Inman. I am Ashley Victoria Robinson. And Professor Jason, would you please dismiss the class? Verily, you mortals have heard the stories of Thor. So kick back a glass of mead and have... A wondrous eternity. 